Hey everyone, welcome to Social Media Hangout Time. I'm Janet Johnson. We are here today with, of course, we have Terry Bean today. So hi, Terry. Hey, how are we doing today? Awesome, very awesome. Uh, cold, but we we we'll be saying that every week for a, little, about a few weeks, cold and then on. you know. <laughs> Go Midwest. Uh, it's Midwest, exactly. So what I want to do is turn it over to you to introduce our special guest. Go ahead. Absolutely, and I am thrilled to have her on our program. This is my good friend, Daphna Michelson Janae. I will say that a couple of times throughout because I just like the way it rings off the lips a little bit. Daphna, say hello. Hello, everybody. It's so nice to meet you. Uh, hey, Daphna. So cool. So cool to have her. So I met Daphna a few years back, 2009 specifically, when she was in the middle of the most amazing journey. Like, there should be a TV show about how <laughs> amazing this journey was. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk about her new book that's forthcoming, and I'll let her tell you a little bit about that. And we're just going to have a conversation about how she used social media to connect with people in all 50 states. So let's talk. Hi. Hi. All right. So I teased it a little bit. All 50 states. Tell us why all 50 states is even relevant in your world. What does that mean? Oh, my goodness. Why is it even relevant? You know, it probably wouldn't have been relevant had um, my boyfriend at the time not asked me what I would do if I won the lottery. But all of a sudden, it became a super relevant thing when I answered, well, if we win the lottery, I'm going to go to all 50 states, and I'm going to meet with every governor, and I'm going to ask them what they're doing to engage their citizens in solving community problems. That is the ultimate geeky answer, in case you're wondering. That is. <laughs> you wouldn't post for that. It crossed all <laughs> categories. There's a cool faction. There's a nerd faction. Geeks are straight up all about that. Right? Young people love it. Old people want to be it. I like it. Yeah, but then, like, the dude bought the wrong lottery ticket, so I'm a little furious with him. I made him marry me, by the way, so that he would have to, you know, pay off that error. Um, but, you know, like, 50 states, really, why did it matter? Because I wanted to be able to paint a picture of what it looked like to be empowered in this country, and for me to be able to show a picture of what it looks like to be empowered in this country, I have to show the whole country. And so that means all 50 states. Wow. Wow. And how? what length of time did you do that in? Um, I did it in a solid calendar year. So I started the first full week of 2009, and I finished the last full week of 2009. And, and the idea was, you know, uh, I don't know if you remember back that far. Uh, many of your viewers may not have been born yet. And um, so totally kidding. Oh, my God, I can't believe she just said that. Um, <laughs> But 2009 was a crazy time in our country. The economy just started to collapse. Um, Detroit probably felt it about three months before everybody else. And three you know, years, three months. Yeah, whatever you know, before. And you know, as as the economy started to play games with our heads um, and with our wallets, I was in a program called Leadership Denver, which I'm sure you have Leadership Detroit and there's Leadership everything. Um, and Leadership Denver were the up-and-coming leaders of the city and county of Denver, and these are powerful, brilliant people, people I admire, people I consider my peers, my my mentors. And these people were throwing up their hands and saying, okay, um, I need somebody to get into this White House and start solving some problems around here. It was an election cycle. It was the very first kind of social media presidential election cycle. So it was different like we didn't know what was going on and we were more capable of saying somebody's got to help me and I was saying okay yes definitely there's a role for our government there's a need for our government but how about we help ourselves and and you know I had this inkling that through social media I was would be able to show people that no matter what you look like what you sound like how much money or education you have that you are empowered and you can solve problems in your community and again, it had to be all 50 states. It had to be a full picture of who we are as America. So you're having this idea of going to 50 states in one year, 50 and 52, as I recall. Correct. And you did, what's that? Correct. Correct. Yay. Yeah, the hashtag, 50 and 52. I think I shared that once or twice. So you're having, you start in January. When are you having these conversations about going and doing this? And, you know, forget about all the people that told you you were crazy because, you know, sometimes Everybody. it takes a little crazy. So go on. Uh -huh. <laughs> What's By the way, Terry, 
Um, I'm going to answer that question, but I also want to say that um, I'm floating around, and maybe your audience could help me. Um, the title of the book is It Takes a Little Crazy to Make a Difference. And yeah. what I would love to be the hashtag is It Takes Crazy. And I I've, and I've, I've floated it out there on social media to see what my peers thought. And um, a bunch of them were concerned about utilizing crazy in a hashtag. But crazy is in the title of my book, and I feel like it's an empowering word. And I float it out there to your audience because I'd love that feedback. The, 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 what I'm thinking about is it takes crazy. It's short enough. It's catchy enough. And I hope that it's empowering sounding. But in, in, in answer to your question about when was I planning this, we're talking May of 2008. So here's, here's a little bit of the kind of the time calendar. The Democratic National Convention was held in Denver in 2008. And I was a volunteer for that convention, and that was August. And so by August, I had everything in order. I had a board. I had applied for my 501c3. We had the website 50in52journey.com, 50in52journey.com. And I started talking to, I had business cards made up, you know, I had, I had everything. I had a, a, a video kind of talking about what we were thinking about doing, was already up on the air. So I spent the entire time at the Democratic National Convention talking to everybody I could, telling them, this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to raise money to do it, and I'm going to go to all 50 states, and I hadn't even quit my job yet, by the way, but, it, you know, it was on the horizon. And people did, they told me. You're nuts, right? I mean, I was a, a, a mayoral appointee to the Denver Women's Commission, and I don't know how many of your audience have heard of our, the, he's our governor now, he was our mayor then, John Hickenlooper, total badass dude. Um, he is, no uh, you know, oh. he's a microbrewer, okay? So, like, let's be clear. And, um, you know, he says to me, Daphna, do you read the newspaper? <laughs> do you know what's going on in our economy? And, and that's what people were saying to me. And yes, I knew what was going on. And yes, I'm a little bit nuts. And yes, that is kind of my brand. But here's the thing. When we start collapsing as an economy, it doesn't mean we need to collapse as a society. And you know, when I, when I went to Michigan, um, I, you were the first person I met in Michigan, Terry. And then beyond you is wh when I started to go around to interviewing other people in Michigan. And what I found in Michigan was what you told me I would find in Michigan, was that your human capital was so powerful, far beyond the dollars that were being lost in the economy. And, and quite frankly, I think that that economic downfall caused Michigan to really amp up and not just Detroit, although Detroit rocked, of course. I mean, come on. But not just Detroit. Even beyond Detroit and Lansing and other places in Michigan that I went, where what you saw were people helping people and coming together and creatively and entrepreneurially solving problems to this challenge, which looked like money. Absolutely. And it's exactly how it's been. Because when you go through something ahead of the curve, you have to figure out how to get out ahead of the curve, otherwise you stay far below the curve. So yeah, it's a matter of coming together. No question. No question. I, I want to circle back on what you said about it takes crazy. Janet's got a huge experience in social media and running things and programs and branding. So Janet, it takes crazy. Is that a is that a cool hashtag? Would you do it? You know, I don't know what the issue is with the crazy. What is the what's what's the feedback? That's the question I had for you on that. Yeah, when I tweeted it out, a couple of people who are other social media geeks, lovers, kind of yeah. you know, like us, um, came back and were concerned that people would take the crazy moniker the wrong way. Um, you know, we use the word crazy when we talk about people who do bad things in our country. And really, I want to take back the crazy because I really, you know. Crazy is the word that people use to describe what it was that I was doing. And at the same time, it was that step into crazy that made it possible and accessible for every person. And it, 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 wasn't, it didn't look neat and clean. And quite, quite frankly, especially in the entrepreneurial realm, nothing is neat and clean. Everything it takes crazy. I mean, you have to be nuts to quit your job and think you're going to generate your own money. There has to be a little bit of crazy in you that says, I believe in myself. And, and maybe it's not even crazy, but in our society, we, we continue to look at belief in your own ability as crazy. 
And we need to debunk that. And so, you know, I think that the, yeah. the, the people who were responding were worried about how the word crazy is currently used. I want to own crazy. But that's the thing. You're owning it. If you're trying to brand yourself, I mean, you know, you, you could do, you know, I'm looking at your book, and it, you could do hashtag make a difference or something like that. But it's not as, it doesn't stand out as much. So, no. you know, I, <laughs> and it's long, and it's, you know, that right. kind of thing. And so if you're trying to brand yourself, you want something memorable, and that's memorable. So I would yeah. say, you know, I would say as long as you're using it in context, with what you're discussing, it, yep. I, I don't see an issue with it at all. All right, Terry, um, let's go. We're going to go with a hashtag war, it takes crazy. On your mark, you said, go. <laughs> it's on, kid. I like it. Isn't, isn't one of the original Apple things all about crazy? Wasn't Steve Jobs giving a salute to the crazy? Am I, am I making this up and inserting words that don't exist? Um, I haven't found that one yet. If you find it, please give it to me because, well, you know, I'm, a, I'm an... I don't know what the word is, but you're uh, an apple, an apple file. You're, you're an I'm just apple. picturing Ashton Kutcher in the role, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Ashton Kutcher? No, I want Sandra Bullock. <laughs> nice. I mean, come on, she did do the net well before any of us understood what social media crazy was. <laughs> yes, that's right. It's true. That's, that's true. That's so funny. I don't. I so I updated Facebook right before coming on here, and I said talking to one of my sheroes. So oh. that's that's you, Daphna, is one of my sheroes. So now we know Thanks, that Sandra Harry. Bullock is one of yours. Sandra Bullock. And she's so cute. Oh my god. She she's is. So cute. She's so cute. <laughs> oh my god. I, yeah, I think anybody. One. You know how you get that laminated pass to be with somebody. Chick oh, digger, guy <laughs> digger. I think you know she's probably on everybody's list. That's awesome. She's on my list, totally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my be. husband says it's totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Smart man. Smart man. All right, so wow, we're off the beaten path just a tad bit. See, part of the reason we don't do these things live, kids, right here. <laughs> no, it's perfect. So, what else? Tell me, tell me three things or four things that you that you embraced and changed you as a result of this journey. Maybe not necessarily people, but possibly their stories and how that impacted you moving forward five and a half years ago or from. Well, now. You know, I, I think one of the things, and you didn't necessarily ask it this way, but I'm going to answer it this way. Um, in terms of what I embraced was um, any opportunity that came towards me, I took. So what that means is if somebody said, hey, we want to go show you X, Y, and Z, I said yes. Um, it, it, never, it was never a mistake. Um, it made for some funny stories. When I got to Alaska, for example, um, I'm, I interviewed an incredible man named Mal Tosi, former NFL uh, Arizona linebacker, I want to say. Uh, Mal, don't kill me. I don't remember. Anyway, it's written down. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, I'm on this flight to Alaska that was supposed to be a direct flight, and there was a problem with the plane, and we ended up landing in Seattle and had this crazy experience where, you know, they just had us line up and order in the aisle, and they had security guards, you know, lining the way. We walked off of one plane, walked onto another plane. And so the woman who was sitting next to me on the first plane was sitting next to me again on the second plane, and it's the middle of the night, but we started talking. And she said, oh, you need to interview this guy named Mal Tosi after I told her what I was doing. And let me see. I think I could find his cell phone number. Like, seriously, this is what Alaska's like. She didn't know him, but she gave me a cell phone number. So I called Mal Tosi when I landed, and he said, yeah, totally, me in this parking lot. So I go to this grocery store, and I meet him in this parking lot, and he pulls up in this huge, my recollection is it was a, a Cadillac um, uh, Escalade, big black Cadillac Escalade, Escalade, totally dark tinted windows filled with teenagers who are high school dropouts. And <laughs> he says, you know, come on, get in my car, leave your car here, I'll bring you back. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sign me up. Totally, right? I'm a you know single woman traveling by myself. Nobody has a clue where I am. And I got into his car. So You're in Alaska. Was, They'll find you. <laughs> and I was in Alaska. <laughs> totally, you know, right? And Mal, oh my God, incredible man, but six foot seven, about 400 pounds, you know, hair longer and crazier wild than mine. <laughs> you know, um, it was amazing. And the, the experiences that I had, because ultimately, Part of it was trusting my instinct. I knew that I was getting into a car of a man who was not going to hurt me. I knew that I was in a safe environment. I knew that I was there to collect his story. 
And what I found when I got to the center where he worked with these kids is this man who picks up kids off the streets because his best friend wouldn't come to college with him and ended up dying in a jail fight. And his entire life has been dedicated since he, he played in the NFL and he died twice on the field, actually dead, had to be resuscitated. Wow. And after the second time, they said, yeah, you can't so much play football anymore. And so, you know, he stopped playing football and he went back to Alaska and he's married. His wife um, at the time, I think she still does, stayed at home. They have five kids. And he goes around Anchorage and he picks up these kids off the street and he teaches, helps them get their GED and he teaches them how to make a living at what they love to do. And this is what it was like. And part of it was that eschewing of the traditional, you know, no, I'll meet you at a location. I'll let everybody know where I am. I have to vet this, that, what? Who was I to vet anything? And my entire journey was like that. You know, when, when people nominated me, um, if you recall, Terry, maybe you don't, but it's in my book so that everybody else will recall it. When I met you, you said, so how many followers do you have on Twitter? <laughs> I was like, 200. <laughs> I was psyched. <laughs> And you're like, <laughs> that's like Forest State. I think you're good. <laughs> right? You're like, I'll help you out with that. And Terry starts tweeting people to follow me and whatever. But I had to learn social media for this, you know, and which is funny, right? I, I get that I'm 42. I totally get that. But I was not the little girl who slept with a doll. I literally slept with a cutout from a magazine of an Apple IIc. I slept with that cutout from the magazine. I, I wanted that computer more than anything in the world. And, you know, for whatever reason, I missed the social media wagon. And so here I am about to do this, and they're like, well, how do you find people in all 50 states? Somebody said, you got you to gotta try social media. And I had to learn it. And the first place I spent my time was MySpace. And for three weeks, I'm banging my head against the computer saying, this is the stupidest thing I've ever found. And guess what? It was the stupidest thing I ever found. And so somebody's like, oh, dude, you have to try the Facebook. I'm like, ooh, what's the Facebook? And so I got onto the Facebook. And for three weeks, I'm banging my head against the computer because it's, you know, 2000 and it's mid-08. And, like, nobody's on there. And I'm banging my head against the computer. This is stupid, 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 stupid. And then it happened. I got a friend request from Devin Bier, who was my huge crush in high school. And Devin was awesome. And by the way, was so totally popular that overnight, all of my friends in high school who were already connected to Devin found me. And I grew up in Cincinnati, and nobody stays in Cincinnati. And so <laughs> overnight, I had a network in all 50 states. And overnight, social media became very real. And I fell in love. I have a whole entire chapter um, on social media in my book it talks about sort of my rules of play and and I feel like you know as we are learning as a community um, what is so important for me is to remember that we only post something that we would say in front of everybody that we learn how to communicate respectfully that we use it as a platform for our passions and for elevating people and we can do it but we're, we're all in the process learning together and it's because of social media and it's because of people like you Terry that taught me how to use it no, I don't know about all that. You seem to be doing just fine. You're just a little short on people to hear you. That's all. <laughs> so, you know, it's interesting. You talk about elevating people. We refer to that as shining the light on people. Janet, do you have a term that you use for for you know elevating people? <sighs> no, not necessarily. No, I like the, I like the shine. I like the el elevating. I mean, I can't at the top. Of, you know, good question, but I don't have it at the top of my head. I like both of yours. Okay, sorry. We'll put you on the spot again later. It'll be fun. No, okay. Yeah, wait, no, it's good. It's good. Putting people on the spot makes them think. It's really good. I like it. I yeah. Like, yeah. Like, no, it's it very good. Well, and I'm still kind of, my mind's thinking MySpace, too, because you brought that up. And that is funny because we're about the same age. We're about, you know, we started at about the same time, and that's where I started, too. And yeah. I actually said, Facebook's dumb. I go, look at this Facebook thing, you know? I mean, and Terry and I were actually the first two that I know of in our high school, other than Dan Laurie, I think, um, that were on yeah. Facebook. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So, yeah. I remember, I remember Danny sending me a note saying, I have 550 friends here on Facebook, and you just need to know I know every single one of them. That was, that was awesome. a big deal. 
I know them. I know them all. They're all my real friends. I think he was calling me out. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's great. So yeah, yeah. I, I understand your background and where and you ended up having to learn it. You know, I used to sell the businesses in the very beginning and go. You know, you need to be on Facebook. It's gonna and then none of them were believing it was gonna be around for five years. Right. Oh, and that's gonna disappear. Oh, the it's fat. gonna be gone. Mm -hmm. And so. It's it's amazing what's what what it's all turned into and how how big the power is. But I love what you're talking about too. Uh, can you expand even more on what you're talking about about what to post the types? Oh, of absolutely. Post? So the when I work with people, and interestingly, I do a lot of different types of work, but people seek me out most for social media consulting, just because we're all still learning how to communicate on the platform. And for me, it's about knowing what you talk about. And I do something with, with everybody that I work with called the social media mission statement. And I have a very strong social media mission statement Th that is kind of my driving force. And in short, it's changing the mirror we use that reflects who we are as a society. I will not post something if it doesn't change the mirror. And, and that helps guide me. I mean, my other little policy is don't post anything after you had anything to drink, which made my recent <laughs> trip to Napa very painful. <laughs> so, so, um, but, but really, it's understanding what it is that you communicate about. And if you can boil down your social media mission statement, is what I call it, but really what it is is your brand. What is your brand? And everything that you post should back up and reinforce your brand. And if it doesn't, you don't have business posting it. And that doesn't mean that I don't post pictures of my family or interactions that I have with people that are not directly work-related because there's that element of authenticity. People are on social media because they want to know you and love you as a human being that you are. And I have, you know, I have like this 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the time, you better be adding value. You better be adding context to who you are and what it is that you do. 20% of the time, if you want to post something up there that you have for sale, Fine. And for me, that 20% of the time, you know, I, I curate TEDx events, like, you know, your, your buddy over there. And I will only post about TEDx 20% of the time because to me, that's selling. I'm trying to build an audience. I'm trying to create a platform. Even though my TEDx events are all content that is value, 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 value. And so as you sort of establish who you are and what your personal brand is and those things that are your passion points, Share them in value. I get in trouble um, with people because I really I don't post about politics, and I'm very involved politically, but I don't post about politics. But that doesn't mean I don't post about issues. So really, in the context of everything, it's all what is the dialogue and what is the conversation, and are you listening? And I have people say to me often, well, how do you listen on social media? Well, you better be listening a heck of a lot on social media because if you start listening, you know how people want to be communicated with. You know the individual poster as a human being, not a screen name. So those are part of my policies. Wow. So let's expand on that a little bit more and give an action step that our audience could actually do with this in the next 24 hours, let's say. Yep. Ready for my secret tool? Love it. Pay very close We're attention. Ready. My secret social media mission statement tool is very simple. There are three questions. Only give yourself two minutes to answer each of these questions, but write down the answers and time yourself. Don't edit, just write them down. The first question is, what is it that you do? And don't put your title. Actually get deep into the context. So for example, if you're a realtor, you don't sell homes, you give people access to their dreams. The second is, why do you do it? And I call this the Freud moment. I want you to actually go back to that light bulb smashing moment. Seth Godin talks about that in, in, his, um, in his books, light bulb smashing moment. What was that light bulb smashing moment? Something happened in your life that triggers what it is that you do. Um, my favorite story about that was a, an engineer, 40-year-old male, nobody, nothing particular. When we asked him why he did what he did, he talked about the time that his favorite auntie gave him a watch and it broke. He spent the next three days taking it apart, reassembling it, learning how to use it, and fell in love with systems. That's why he does what he does. And let me tell you, as a woman who's hiring, I'm going to hire him now because I know about his auntie. I can see him as a little boy. So really reflect back to the holistic. 
why is it that you do that, what you do? And then finally, what benefit do people gain from doing business with you? This is the what's in it for them. Sit in their seat for two, two minutes and answer that question from the, from the perspective of your client saying, what's in it for me? And you better have a strong what's in it for me, for them, if you know what I mean. Okay. After you're done, look at all three answers and pull out the powerful words. What are the content areas that you mentioned? What are the different components of who you are and what you do? And formulate it into a three-sentence statement. Bonus points if you can get it down to 160 characters, because that's your Twitter bio. 160, it's not 140, by the by, because you don't have the name. Anyway, different, different conversation. Um, so bonus points if you can get it down to 160. Um, but three sentences will really do you well. And if you can boil it down to that three-sentence statement, that's your social media mission statement. And everything you post has to check against that. That means you're not bashing somebody very likely. And if that could stop you from making a social media error, making a joke that you think is funny that can be misinterpreted and cause you to lose your job, as we've seen happen in our society time and time too many again. times yeah. already, um, this is your CYA policy. And it's also going to create relevant, powerful content that your users can share. Love it. This was a lot of lot of information. So we uh, let's end on that note uh, because it was fantastic information. Uh, what I want to do is reiterate a little bit about you and your book and your website and, and details on you. This is show number 44 so you can anybody listening can find all these notes and links and all the details on socialmediahangouttime.com forward slash 44, which will be changed soon, but uh, Terry and I are, we, we, I think Terry and I need to sit down and do this mission statement like you just discussed for this show because we are revamping. So that's, it's perfect timing. It's perfect awesome. timing. Uh, so anyway, tell us about your book. I, you mentioned it. Tell us a little more when it comes out and the details on that. Book comes out this week. Uh, come to my website, DaphnaMichelsonJene.com, D-A-F-N-A-M-I-C-H-A-E-L-S-O-N-J-E-N-E-T.com. And all of the information is right there. We're looking for book signing ambassadors all across the country and all across the world. Click on the book signing ambassadors link to find out how you can apply to be a book signing ambassador. And I'll love you forever. And I'll bring you value to your community and we'll donate portions of the proceeds, and I'll do a free workshop, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all sorts of great stuff. And everything you need to know about me is right there on that website, and I look forward to meeting you all. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Let me make sure we have a link in there, too, right? Because no one wants to figure out how to spell that on their own <laughs> after hearing it. Yes, we will make sure all the links are on there. So we really appreciate your time. And once again, this is show number 44. Thank you. Thank you.